it was the postal ballots that swung it. In the end, there were only about 30,000 votes in it. But they were enough for Alexander van der Bellen, an aristocratic economist, the establishment candidate, but not from one of the two historically dominant parties, and crucially, also not from the far right. He vowed to unite his country, and he's got quite a job on his hands. Well, its supporters are cheering, but this has been the narrowest of victories. And Austria, much like Europe itself, is now a place of deeply polarised politics. For some of his supporters, there was relief more than jubilation, not least for this Syrian woman. A Vienna resident of 30 years who's taken in relatives who fled the war. This morning, on the streets of the capital, a fresh message from Norbert Hofer. Thank you, Austria. The Freedom Party may have lost this time, but it's got its eyes on the next election. Perhaps it was the horrible weather, but in district number 10, a neighborhood of working class Austrians and immigrants, it didn't feel like business as usual. In the cafes, they started drinking before noon, most people we spoke to were Freedom Party supporters. We've got a new president and it's the same as for 10 years, 15 years. And so I'm a little bit disappointed. To, uh, I, I want to try something new. There are many old people in Wien and they need self-support because there is less pension. And with these immigrants, that will be too much. Vienna is proud of its cultural history. The Freedom Party has capitalized on fears among some Austrians that their country is being overwhelmed by immigrants. In the run-up to this election, one incident helped crystallize those fears. A cleaner in her 50s was clubbed to death in the street. Her name was Maria Eschelmuller. She was buried today. The suspect is a Kenyan who'd overstayed his visa. The case was widely covered and her funeral was attended by senior Freedom Party officials. Paul Stadler was elected mayor of this district last year, a neighborhood that had, for decades, been a stronghold of the center-left SPO. He doesn't like being called a Nazi. <laughs> Uh, man muss definieren, was ist rechtsextrem. Ja? Bin ich rechts, weil ich sage, ich muss es erst schauen, dass ich meine einheimischen Leute zu einer Arbeit bringe. Ich muss schauen, dass meine einheimischen Kinder die Möglichkeit haben, einen Lehrplatz zu bekommen. Ja? Ich muss schauen, dass es meinen, also den österreichischen Staatsbürgern als erstes gut geht. Bin ich aus diesem Grund rechts, dann bin ich gern rechts. Ja? Like many parties on the European right, the Freedom Party makes a conscious effort to sound reasonable. But for some, their rhetoric has disturbing echoes. Emanuela Delignon was eight when Germany annexed Austria. She remembers the Nazis marching in. I didn't realize what, what it meant. Only a little event. I was in school, uh, first class or second class, and we had to have our, our praying in the morning. And the next day, another teacher came in and said, Heil Hitler. That was a changing, <laughs> yeah, from one day to another. And you, when you look at politics in Austria today and what's been happening in the past few weeks, what do you think? Um, that they are all wolves. That at first I'm thinking, is it possible that young people didn't learn anything from history to, 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 uh, to, to arouse these ideas anymore. To be clear, the Freedom Party is not the Nazi Party. It's attracting voters from the right and the left on issues that range from identity to economics. This election tells us something really quite startling about the extent to which the speed at which people are losing faith in the old political consensus, that old duopoly of centre-left versus centre-right, which has governed so much of Europe since the end of the Second World War.
I think it's no longer right and left, but it's a division of education, of uh, income, of wealth, um, of sex also, because m many more female voters support Van der Bellen. A division whether where you live, in the countryside or in the cities, and a division of prospects for the future. Today's front pages call Mr. Van der Bellen half a president. Austria is not the only country in Europe today where the dividing line is between those who feel they're benefiting from globalization and those who are sure they're not.